that intro, Katie. <laughs> hey, what's going on, you guys? Welcome to the uh, Full Gear Recap, brought to you by the Smack Draw Podcast. I am your host, Katie. Katie, baby. baby. There it is. Uh, and I'm joined by not Kevin Crazy, not RN, but Kyle Tyson himself. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, the other guys are fired. Fuck them. Everyone's fired. It's literally a two-person show now. It's me and Kyle. How did I get sucked into happen. this? I don't know. <laughs> you, I think you volunteered to do this. Like you have a three-person crew, and your 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 soldiers they they just they they went AWOL. I got abandoned. You did get abandoned. And you know, as a child. <laughs> compared to everyone else i feel i feel not okay they're oh. gonna get a lashing later no it's worry. okay i i actually i wanted to be on the show it's full gear i'm not gonna fucking pass up full gear and it was incredible dude it was so like dope. every match hit i mean some more than others I'll, but like everything say, hit look it, we can look you through rose-colored glasses. I will say, not every match had to be on pay-per-view. I mean, I think the obvious one was Orange Cassidy and John Silver. As fun as it was, that mm-hmm. could have been a dynamite match. For sure. Yeah. I also was, I mean, I was. I might be the only person I wasn't a big fan of the Elite Deletion match. Really? Well, I... How okay? So how about this? How about this? Did you ever see Gangrel or Hurricane Helms live? Um, you're too Hurricane young, right? Hel- no, Hurricane Helms, maybe. Gangrel, no chance on hell. Okay. Yeah, Gangrel, I popped for. <sighs> Gangrel is the start of the Hardy Boys. I, I did know that. I know who Gangrel is. Yeah, I know all that. Yeah. I, but listen. <laughs> That came that came after the Bucks match, didn't it? Uh, yeah, I was too emotionally scarred from the fucking Young Bucks match to pay attention to the lead to the, 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 the fuck it was called. <laughs> I screamed, I cried, I took a few shots. It, it had to happen. Dude, that match. They they fit in every goddamn tag team callback they could do. They did. In that fucking match. When they did the 3D to uh, twist of fate, Swanton bomb. Swanton. I was like, "Oh my god, dude!" <laughs> like, it was only, great. The only thing was missing was the five second pose afterwards for the Edge and Christian callback. Had they done that <laughs> shit and hit all three tag teams, would have been fucking shit, man. It was awesome though. That match was fantastic. My favorite match of the night. I mean, no spoiler alert, but <laughs> spoilers. Yeah. It shouldn't be. I'm literally wearing <laughs> the merch freak. <laughs> not mind freak merch mind. freak hey, look, i get Never it mind. does anyways it does. anyways oh yeah so like we do a recap show that's usually live on twitch.tv slash putting you over but standing streamer decided to go long so <laughs> <laughs> surprise <laughs> we're on our own twitch what is it twitch.tv slash smack podcast that's correct performing oh, for God. an audience of three people thank you guys and that's all that matters. That's all that matters is you three the people. The three people that matter. <sighs> but when we're not live and not on either Twitch channel, youtube.com slash podcast. Subscribe when you're over there. We're almost at 200. I believe we're at like 180. Yep. 181? 181. Oh, didn't mm-hmm. the last time I checked. Savannah, uh, are you on our YouTube channel yet? Savannah? I bet Savannah hasn't subscribed yet. Savannah, go subscribe to our YouTube. I'm How many sorry. times can you say Savannah in one sentence? <laughs> I'm sorry, Katie. Go on. Go on. I was just going to say, um, if you like to listen to the podcast, we have the audio form up on a plethora of podcast platforms. And she screams, I'm already subscribed in the chat. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, we also are the exclusive recap for Wrestling News World. Head on over to the website, bookmark the page, make your home for all of your wrestling news, wants, and needs. Uh, check out their recaps, their articles, their podcasts, whatever. Uh, premium content. And then patreon.com slash podcast for us. That's right. Uh, Look at that. Look at that. Is... Look at those stickers. There's me modeling a shirt. My wife modeling a shirt. 
Katie's never going to get the model a shirt because she's never getting a shirt. Get you a fucking <laughs> shirt, man. Uh, oh God, this is dude. the stick. This is the stickers all over again. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, really quick. Speaking <sighs> about wrestling news world, uh, the vice president of the website, Thomas Fenton, was on another episode of UWO recently. Um, if you don't have time to listen to that full episode, which went long, okay, it was about an hour and twenty minutes almost. Uh, it had uh, Warren Hayes on there, and then also uh, Colin West the uh ceo of synergy pro wrestling check out the highlights uh on our youtube channel it's up right now condense that whole show into about eight minutes uh it's a fun watch man go check it out it's pretty funny got a dancing rat katie really likes the dancing rat Love it so much. <laughs> it's the little things in life kyle it's the little things so, literally so it's like this big after this recap or pause this and go watch it and come back however you want to do it on youtube uh go check out that uh the the highlights of video and like it subscribe to our show all that fun stuff thank you guys and that's the show. See you guys later. <laughs> uh, could you imagine? Uh, yeah, no. Let's let's not walk off. So, he, Full Gear was a long show, man. Mm-hmm. It was. That's why I was like, we didn't need this elite deletion match. We didn't need Cassidy versus Silver, although it was very entertaining. But we yeah. didn't need those trying to think i'm trying to think so i mean they crammed like two pay-per-views into one pay-per-view if you think about it the the elite deletion is always going to be a pay-per-view match i think mm -hmm. the only one you could argue was orange cassidy and john silver everything else you probably could have made two pay-per-views out of the young bucks and ftr main eventing one and then John Moxley and and uh, Eddie Kingston. Kingston. Yeah, um, main eventing the second, and you probably could have done it. But I mean, I guess that's what you get when they only do what like four pay per views a year, four or five. Revolution, double or nothing, all out for year. Fighter five, Fest. Five, five. Yeah. yeah. Five pay per views a year. So yeah, you get these really dense shows. And like Revolutions, February twenty seventh. That's how many months away? December? Three months? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, man. No, it's it's dope. It's dope. But so yeah, that's why we get these long ass pay per views. All the matches though. How'd you feel about them? I I didn't really have an issue with like any of them. I mean, some I liked more than others. Obviously, Young Bucks, FDR, uh, that TNT title match, banger. Um, what was it? Oh, Mox and Kingston. Brutal. Couldn't ask for anything more. I'm I mean, going to say Mox and Kingston was kind of the flattest of the big matches. It wasn't bad. But... I could see that. I mean, for one, you are following a really great I Quit match in Roman Reigns and Jey Uso. Like, That's true. You know what I mean? I don't know how many people out there exclusively watch AEW and don't watch WWE. But, I mean, mm -hmm. if you do watch the two, Roman Reigns and Jey Uso had a very, very good I Quit match. And this one, it, it, like I said, it wasn't bad, but it didn't. it did not hit, like, the emotional peaks I think it was intended to. Yeah, I mean, like, this one obviously was way more brutal than the Roman J one, yeah. for obvious reasons, but I still loved it. It was good. It was really good. Your favorite It match needed was... murder. Cold-blooded murder. murder. <laughs> Thanks, yes. Jay. Thank you, Jay. It's catching on. Um, what was your match of the night? The tag? Hell yeah. Yeah, same here. That was my match of the night. If it if it wasn't okay, if it wasn't the Bucks, say I wasn't a young Bucks stan. Um me, fuck. See, now I don't even know. Kenny Kenny and Hangman. Uh, I would go Cody and Darby. That's what I, I was stuck between the two. Yeah, I'd go Cody and Darby. The Arn Anderson added to a level of storytelling that you didn't get out of Kenny and Omega by themselves. 
That's true. Kenny and like yeah. Kenny and, and, and Hangman, I wanted this storytelling of I don't know, Hangman somehow conveying that he was sorry and then he wants like affection. But really, if you think about it, we just got this really good exhibition match. Like I don't I don't know how much storytelling was done by the guys in the ring outside, you know, instead of the commentary. Commentary is the one who sold told the story in that. Um, yeah in the ring it was a fantastic match don't get me wrong beautiful match yeah 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 but i think that arn anderson added an extra layer with cody versus darby you know mm-hmm. that just wasn't present in uh the hangman and and uh uh kenny, kenny. yeah i agree i mean like like we have said <laughs> like five times already Every match was great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I guess we should probably start going through the matches. So the buy-in, the NWA Women's Championship. So Serena Deeb, the champion, taking on Allison K. It was a great like start to the pay-per-view, and I think it gave a good vibe for the whole pay-per-view overall. Because like very technical, Serena Deeb's amazing. Her technical skill is fantastic. Her pinning uh, transitions and everything she does is great. Uh, she does a lot of focus on... Thunder Rosa's in AEW. Signed. Confirmed. Thunder Rosa. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. First of all, match. relax. It was a good match. Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa's in I'm... AEW. I lit- now, is, now, did she actually sign a contract? I mean, it has to be. Why would you come out? All, all that, like, Slipknot music and shit that she had? I don't know if it was really Slipknot, but... I, I don't think it was Slipknot. <laughs> I mean... Listen. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> you know how many people have no contracts and we're just showing up on AEW every week? Like, Serena Deeb just got a contract, like, two months ago. Or, two weeks ago. Not two months. Jesus. But she's still NWA champion. She hits the Serenity Lock for the win. And then Thunder Rosa comes out and is like, listen, bitch, I want my title back. (laughs) She lost it 11 days ago. Obviously, she wants her title back. I don't blame her. Yo, Thunder Rosa's AEW. That's where I'm going. Are you you confirming? (laughs) I'm confirming this right now. Exclusive Smack Raw. (laughs) Breaking news on the SmackDown podcast. No, so Thunder, you, Thunder Rosa. So if I could piece this together, why I think it. Um, okay. So usually WWE, they have a uh, no compete contract. You know, mm-hmm. not only after you leave them, but before you come to WWE. A lot of the time, like you have to stop. Okay. You have to uh, uh, discontinue any of your independent bookings. All that stuff. You know, that makes sense. So that's why people were speculating when Thunder Rosa dropped the belt all of a sudden in the middle of doing a program with Eva Lise and Diamante. Mm -hmm. Uh, They were like, oh, this must confirm she's going to WWE because all of a sudden she's abandoning like mid story with AEW. So for that reason alone, that's why I think Thunder Rosa is signing AEW. Um, just because it seems odd to reintroduce herself into a title picture uh, right in the critical point when everyone's like, where are you going? You know, where are you going? What sense would it make for AEW, like her to be like, okay, I want to be back in the NWA title picture with, with AEW and then do like a couple matches over like a month and then just fucking bail for WWE. It makes no sense. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, you're right. Because, <laughs> like, didn't they keep teasing that, like, someone was going to be, like, the next big star or something for the previews for Full Gear? Yeah, I think so. Maybe I, it was Thunder Rosa. Like that. Maybe. I, I just really wish she had fucking just, like, ripped off her shirt and there was, like, an AEW shirt, another shirt. Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> god hell yeah man no i i I think that would be awesome though i mean i truly hope that she 
is a part of AEW. I mean, that kid wasn't kidding. We really are on his big screen. <laughs> Listen, thanks, Jay. <laughs> I don't. I don't mean to be like a stand because I love all wrestling, but yeah. I I have so much less faith on up and coming talent signing to WWE as I do AEW. I by all means, I don't think if you sign to AEW, you're a surefire thing, and they're going to do everything right with you. Look at fucking mm -hmm. um, Zack Ryder. You know what I mean? Even he Fuck. coming over, they were like, bro, we can't do anything with you. And he was out the door, bro. you know? Uh, yeah, he was never even, he, he never even signed a contract for AEW. He just showed up like for two weeks and then was yeah. gone. Let's, let's get this straight, Katie. Oh, they okay. didn't sign him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it wasn't that he didn't sign a contract. They did not propose one to him. Fuck. I feel bad. You hate though. to see it. I, I hate to see it, man. But I mean, I hate to see it. the damage is done, man. The damage is done with Zack Ryder. Okay. <laughs> like... Oof. Bro. All right. My bad. I'll stop uh... hijacking your show. And this uh, no no this is our show everyone else left me at least you're here <laughs> god damn it uh so the first match on the main card was that uh world uh title tournament whatever the fuck they called it the final match uh kenny omega taking on hangman and a page for some reason don callis from impact was on commentary because he's such good friends with Kenny Omega. But th why the fuck? That doesn't matter. <laughs> you know what was really cool to me was they were able to acknowledge, like, Impact Wrestling. They were like, you know, in the wrestling business, you know, contracts and this, everything, you know, they all mean the world. But these two guys' friendship transcend business and contract relations <laughs> so apparently yeah don Callis was there i i don't know do you think this is like the beginning signs of a working relationship with impact maybe i mean if i mean can, if they can bring don Callis over who's like bring their over evp the or some shit right good brothers maybe Ooh, good brothers in fucking aw oh. Who said it? Yeah. Who said too sweet? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Bullet Club reunion, like it should have been. Yes. <sighs> Don't get me started on that. Anyways, uh, Kenny comes out with a new list of achievements because that's his thing now. Hangman comes out with uh, his new nameplate thing that says "Uh, Focused Yeehaw Man." I missed it. My shit froze on me. That's what it said. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic i love it so much and it was very true he was so focused this entire match like they didn't even do a handshake in the beginning they did a nice freaking chop battle because both of them hit so goddamn hard uh page just throwing kenny out into the barricade and it looks like kenny like tweaks his knee kind of early into the match or they played it up that he tweaked his knee because he like misstepped he slid a little bit I don't know if he actually hurt himself. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. They. I mean, he like kept uh, clutching at his. I think left knee. I don't um, think so. I think everything was planned. Yeah. 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 Like, there's there's no way that Matt's hurt and Kenny's hurt, and like that's way too many people getting hurt like the same time. Yeah. Especially all like your big names. No. No, nah, it was it was fake. We're confirming it now. It was it was it was all planned. Kenny's not hurt. <laughs> I like, um, I like that the I mean the match was just really surrounded that around the fact that they got to know each other uh, mm -hmm. in the tag team. So you saw a lot of counters in their regular offense. Yeah, and um, I think it was last week or Wednesday because. <laughs> It's still it's the same week. Um, <laughs> Paige had his interview and he's like, oh, well, I know Kenny's moves. I can reverse them. He did. He that was his that was his plan going into it. He tries his own one winged angel. Um, Kenny hits uh, Paige with a V trigger while he tries to go for the buckshot lariat. That the looked nasty. Uh huh. 
I, I don't know if it was just because I was on my cell phone and maybe obscured it. Looked like Kenny need him in like I thought I thought it was another case of like when O'Reilly and fucking Finn Balor faced each other and another oh. knee went too hard. I was like, oh god, broken jaw. <laughs> it was bad. And like that led into what Savannah's talking about, uh that brutal ass power bomb to Kenny on the stage. Mm-hmm. His head just bounced. Oh, a lot it, like, of hard hitting shit in this match. Two of the hardest hitting men on their roster, by far. What you uh, What you think of the finish of Adam Page knowing he was in the one winged angel trying to fight it off oh. and still succumb to it? It broke my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I I knew Kenny was gonna win. I knew right. it because it's it it was gonna set up him versus mox i knew it but it took two v triggers and a one wicked angel and page with all of his yeehaw heart tried so hard to not get hit with it it was amazing because you know usually by the time like you're in a move where you're pl- uh, like propped up on someone's shoulders you're done because i mean i would i would think i would assume that you don't want to throw off the guy's balance and fuck up the move but these mm-hmm. guys choreographed it so perfect where Adam Page was slowly falling forward, fighting Kenny's hand, and right at the tipping point, Kenny got the grip and delivered it last second. I mean, that was a thing of beauty. I'd love to watch that gif over and over. Because it it really looked like how Hangman was fighting it, that was going to be, he was going to get out. Like, Mm -hmm. it, it did not look like he would actually succumb to it. And then he did. And, and yeah, it was it was a pretty heartbreaking moment. The poor cowboy. Like, what does he do now? <laughs> Listen, I don't know if it's because I had an off-putting day or because I knew I'd be crying later for the Young Bucks match, but this made me so sad. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm playing up the stereotype of, yeah, women are emotional. No, I mean it was it was a good one. Um, I don't honestly, I don't think any of them got me like that tonight. But um, I don't know. I, I mean, I was definitely sad to see a couple of the people that lost tonight. Like for sure, was like, fuck, really would have liked to see you overcome that hill. Um, mm-hmm. This match was great though. It was it was it was a great match. Like I said, the ending was good. Um, yeah. I really just want Kenny turning heel. Mm-hmm. Like, As we all do. <laughs> when is it going to fucking happen? I don't... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I hope soon. We, uh, afterwards, after the match, though, we did, we got uh, Orange Cassidy and John Silver, if I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yes. Uh, so they followed such a dramatic <laughs> match with a comedy match and these two did great they did great for one john silver is like a miniature brock lesnar this he really dude is. is powerful as fuck holy shit man um so you get you get all the classic spots with orange cassidy Hands in mm-hmm. the pocket. John Silver's doing a lot of the muscle poses. He's not really trying to recruit him. I was expecting that. But it was more or less John Silver doing his poses, which, I mean, the dude's jacked. For 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 a child, he's fucking jacked, <laughs> all right? He's 29. <laughs> um, Orange Cassidy, they're doing the, if you watch Being the Elite, they're doing the whole thing where Orange Cassidy would, like, slowly pour the Kool-Aid on the ground. Uh, except they're push it yeah yeah yeah. instead they're doing this where orange cassidy's putting his hands in his pockets so after about like the second or third time of cassidy doing this john silver like hilariously tears out orange cassidy's pockets um the when these guys do pick it up though uh they show you that both of them extremely talented guys in the ring i mean it's hard to go move for move like the spots they did. I will say at one point, John Silver looks like he's about to do some crazy F5 looking move for Orange Cassidy to reverse it into some, I think, like a tornado DDT. 
it was it was so fast and frenetic. It was it was extremely impressive. Uh, but I mean, that was kind of the match. They gave you a comedy match to begin with, and then showed you how truly impressive they are. I think the only unfortunate part is John Silver is one of those people that is so talented, but how do you utilize it to make him yeah. stand out? Like make him like a breakout talent. Cause I feel like he has that in him, but it's like he's pigeonholed. Like and he's so fucking talented, man. I love John Silver. <laughs> uh Cassidy picks up the win though. I, I forget exactly how he does it. Uh he hits the orange punch into the uh beach break. The beach break. No, what's win. the beach break? I forget. It's it's like bro, I don't know how to fucking describe anything. Come on now, come on. No, 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 no. Let me think. It's like I'm trying to think of like what it's like near to being called. He like I mean, picks he... them up and like drops them like on their head. Like a pile driver. Kinda? Maybe if you do charades. Maybe. I'm not doing charades. On, you can you go can to hell. Charades? No, 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 no. I'm not getting up. <laughs> if I get up, I'm leaving. <laughs> do you have a I'm stuffed not doing animal sh- we could we could uh, imitate this on? No. <laughs> I'm giving oh you shit, Katie. God. I'm giving you shit. I know you are. <laughs> You're making my life hell. What um? What do we get after the Cassidy and Silver match? Uh, the TNT title match. Cody Rhodes. He got yes. his last name back. Fuck yes. Dude, so did you happen to see, not like I'm a big shot or nothing, but did you happen to see my Twitter, like what I posted and then the reply I got to it? No, I will look right now. No, 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 no. It was from a couple days ago. It was from Dynamite. So somebody was in the crowd. They posted a video and I, listen, I don't have your handle. I apologize in advance to you. Uh, This person uh, recorded a video of Cody Rhodes announcing to the crowd that he got his uh, his name. Last name back. Yeah, yeah. So I took the video. I I used it and then I altered it with the meme of like the text conversation from like Dad. Why the fuck are you crying so loud? And then I gotta see it. Yeah, and it's Cody Rhodes announcing his the name he got back. Well, apparently that pissed the guy off because I took his video. Although this dude's got like thousands and thousands of views. I got maybe 12, you know? You 43. Okay. Now though, at now. <laughs> but um but yeah, he like he he gave me some like patronizing like you're welcome and then quote tweeted his own tweet. <laughs> I hate people. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it says it says you have a comment, but it won't let me see it. Oh, because so. I hid the shit. I was I was like, you gonna be petty? I'll be petty. <laughs> <laughs> you petty? I'm petty. Pet. Uh, yeah, but uh, <laughs> what a time. <laughs> My bad, Fuck. man. Look, listen. I didn't realize that every video people fucking record and post on Twitter is copyrighted. My my fault. All right. Yeah, Kyle, how'd you not know that? Anyways, what'd you think of Darby Allen's fucking car? (laughs) I fucking love Darby Allen. Listen, Darby Allen is what emo Katie aspired to be. (laughs) Listen, I love Darby Allen. I almost wore my Darby shirt, but I was like, no, merch freak. Merch freak. Uh, Darby is just like this perfect example of basically like the generation now where like they don't give a fuck they're gonna stand out they're gonna do what they want and that's that's darby allen as a whole and i love it maybe that's why i love him so much because i'm like i relate yeah i mean (coughs) it's this nothing will ever make me sound like such an old man I can't wait to hear this. Yeah, no, but it, it is it really is his attitude, like to like not give a fuck, it's my time, you know, all of that shit. Uh that you would want in anyone who's breaking out. I love I love how um uh Cody Rhodes put it was a lot of these people in AEW were rookies last year. We're in year two. You're not a rookie no more, including Darby mm-hmm. Allen. Um Cody Rhodes had a very nice tweet afterwards. It was like, it's time for you to be a star. It's time for you to be a role model. All that other, like, babyface bullshit. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> babyface bullshit. 
No, Darby Allen's awesome. I, I think another reason why I like him too is uh, between like the black and white and the uh, his music, it, it screams like '90s influence. Like it really, mm-hmm. really does. I mean, a lot of people compare him to fucking Sting, and like you know, not even like you know Surfer Sting, but like the Crow Sting, which obviously, well, obviously not Surfer Sting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which obviously is like a '90s uh, character as well. So. Maybe that's why I relate to him, too, is he feels like a throwback from, like, my childhood. Uh, even though the dude is looks like a child himself. But still. He's, still. He's trying. <laughs> still. His theme, <laughs> banger. It's on my it's on my Spotify playlist. Fucking I listen to it all the time. It, yes. It's so good. <laughs> it, do, it has no right to be that good. And it's so good. Uh, but this match was also had no right to be this good. And it was amazing. At first, like, Cody's kind of toying with Darby. Uh, he does this brutal-ass hammerlock and just throws Darby onto the stage. Which, okay, heal Cody. Like, there was no need. <laughs> he he kept, like, popping between face and heel the whole match. Did you notice that? Yeah. that So that's why I said I really liked Arn. Because what really stuck out to me in the first part was... Cody hits Darby with some move and then Cody breaks into push-ups and then yep. Arn loses it ring style. I was like, fucking stop with the push-ups. Get on him. Stop underestimating. And I loved that because that is such good. If Arn is intended to be a coach, that's signs mm-hmm. of being a good coach. You're not going to tell your guys to showboat. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're there to be a legitimate, um, like a, a, a effective coach and that's yeah. what arn was playing all night man and i i loved it and i loved that uh just that dynamic he was trying to reel cody in uh to stay focused that you know like look man one of the matches that you had with darby like you didn't even beat him it was a draw and then the second yeah. match arguably had you not been had darby's coffin drop not fallen just like an inch too far over you would have lost that match so I loved mm-hmm. how serious Arn was, and I thought that was really good. It, yeah, Arn definitely helped make that match what it was, because Cody's in there trying to just fuck with Darby, and Arn pulls him out, and he's like, you can muscle this kid around. He's like a buck 80 at most, and you put on 14 pounds of muscle, and they were sure to bring that up again on commentary. Yeah, he's a heavyweight Cody's now. Ripped. Yeah. I didn't know we were in New Japan where they had heavyweights and <laughs> freaking juniors, but I mean, Cody hits like the avalanche crossroads from the top, Dude, which was talk about a fucking move, man. Oh my God. I want to just see that gif of the avalanche crossroads over and over again. That shit looks scary as fuck. Yeah, I mean, Darby literally went across the ring. (laughs) All right, that was a little comical. (laughs) Well, I mean, with just the throw alone, he got at least halfway. Mm -hmm. And then just continued to roll. He's a smart kid, because Cody tried to go for the pin. His arm was under the rope. Um, Cody, at one point, tries to use his, like, uh, weight belt. Because, again, you're a face, and you're going to try and cheat. Good job, Cody. Never You're making understood a lot of sense. That, by the way. Yeah, not only that, but how the weight belt would not get him disqualified. It's it's an it's an object. Like it it, yeah. it should. <laughs> He's used it before in matches, and, and I think not it was like DQ'd. It doesn't make sense. Does I get it. Not. He's an EVP, but like it doesn't yeah. fucking matter. Oh wait, don't no, that okay? Now it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> you sign my paychecks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> yep. Um, so, listen, there was, like, a roll-up pin sequence, but, like, constant back and forth between the two of them, and Darby fucking pins him when I say I screamed. I screamed so hard, because I wanted Darby to win. This kid got his title, like, he's now the face of TNT, and (sighs) Cody was shook. (laughs) This guy was like, there's no way. Arn was pissed, losing his shit mm. ringside. Uh, but I, like, I, I, oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say I liked how it happened because mm-hmm. towards the second half of that match, 
it kind of became unbelievable that Darby would be able to put away Cody. Once Cody kicked mm-hmm. out of a coffin drop, what else does Darby have in his arsenal that's going to yeah. put him down for a three count? So I thought that was a very clever way to do it and and not even do it in a shock roll up like a singular roll up or reversal, but to have a roll up reversal followed by another roll up reversal until ultimately after like three or four exchanged Darby gets one because that is it, it was truly like you didn't see it coming. And if we see that spot so many times in wrestling, at some point it should pay off. Otherwise, it's silly. Yeah. So I, I honestly thought that like that was, in my opinion, the perfect way for Darby to beat Cody. Like, and, I agree. Yeah, yeah. And not even in like a, like a kayfabe sense of like, oh, Cody looks strong. Like, I just thought like the psychology of the match, I thought it looked great. Um, and then, yeah, Darby being champs, great. Thank God for fucking Taz, though, because they were getting too mushy. Cody Go straight to hell. Cody kneeling, bending the knee. Darby crying. Dude, once Taz came, I was like, thank God, man. Like, it's like, I get it. Like, I get it. But then there is milking it too much. And Taz was the voice right there. Like, you boys are nah. milking it too much. Uh, him, Matt Stryker, and the mini rock proceeded to fucking murder Darby Allen. <laughs> uh, they fucking killed him and they threw him into the set. Uh, they were about to break his arm in his car. And then um, uh, what's his name? I forget because I don't have Will any- Hobbs. Will Hobbs. Thank you. Uh, finally came. Saved Darby. Will Hobbs almost broke Darby's arm, by the way. Just want to let you know. There wasn't but much I, room to run between the open door because if if you know if you guys didn't watch a why the hell are you watching a recap show you should be fucking you know uh, watching the show then us. The <laughs> but uh, they propped Darby Allen up on the windshield of his car and opened the driver's side door and had his arm propped in between the door and the car and we're gonna crush it. Well, when Will Hobbs came out, they ran off, but there wasn't much of a gap, and Will Hobbs almost accidentally crushed the door on darby allen's arm he was close he touched the door a little bit i was like oh yeah. god um i like i like uh, loyalty jay's quote here it says we paid for murder not for mushy mushy shit Kaita. <laughs> like as a quote <laughs> not my exact words but i i, I agree with the sentence. and it's basically what you're saying yeah i agree with it you don't you don't want to see emotion Pure, pure, pure emotion. No, 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 no. I like emotion in a match, but listen, like, there is a point when you're drawing it too long, okay? And Taz came out at the perfect time. You know, it was great when Cody gave him the belt, but the fact that they lingered for another 60 seconds made me agree with Taz. I was like, all right, this is enough. All right, it's enough. Okay. <laughs> Agree to we disagree, can agree. I, w- I was just going to say that. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you reading my mind? What the oh, fuck? Yeah. What do we get next? The Briefly, we got a dumb as backstage interview with QT Marshall and Dustin Rhodes talking about Allie. Like, <sighs> what was the match they announced? This That's the talking point. Um, what is it called? A bunkhouse match bunk house match you go ahead tell me about the segment i am going to google what the fuck a bunk house match is i mean basically uh qt and dustin are talking about ally uh who was using qt marshall for his credit cards and his cars and I don't know, a bunch of other stuff because he's a part of the Nightmare family and since it's part of the Nightmare family, they get more TV time, which means more money. And um, he tells Blade to keep his house in check or whatever because Allie's apparently messing around. I don't know. Yeah. And then Dustin is like, there's been fantastic women in this business and you're not one of them. I was like, first of all, Grandpa, please relax. <laughs> Like, you're getting a little too aggressive. Uh, And then he announces this bunkhouse match for Wednesday. And... uh, So, what I'm reading here 
It's a play on NWA's Jim Crockett's promotion. It's essentially a street fight. But instead of wearing, you know, jeans and sneakers, you wore bunkhouse gear, blue jeans and cowboy boots. And uh, and it was a battle royal because it was called the Bunkhouse Stampede. Uh, okay. So I'm assuming this is a street fight, but you wear cowboy boots. <laughs> but you wear cowboy boots. Yeah. Why isn't Hangman involved? <laughs> uh, you keep going. I'm gonna look up see if I can't find some more. Okay. I mean that. I mean that was basically that segment. It was. Uh, okay. Delson literally ends it with "This is war." I said, "Okay." <laughs> okay. So I think I found it. I think I found it. Hold on one second. Oh, it's not in goddamn alphabetical order because uh, I'm on this page. Hold on really quick. Um, anything goes match. No cage. No ladder. No strap. Okay. We're used to the scaffold match. Ooh. Battle Jesus. Royal. Spin the wheel. Make a deal. Uh, Hell yeah. First blood weapons match. Light bulb Why death just, match. Like... Oh, Jesus. Why don't you just control F that shit and search uh bunkhouse i did uh, i don't know what you're talking about thumbtack death match glass <laughs> death match item on a pole match uh barbed wire death match a lot of death matches kendo stick match matches. dueling canes uh question mark versus question mark match mask versus mask title versus title um san francisco 49ers match interesting what the fuck uh intergender casket buried alive cat fight Ooh, cat fight um Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Freak of nature death match. Elimination tag match. Three-way dance. Triple threat tournament. Oh, my God. How many fucking matches? Uh, oh, great. It's not even on this goddamn uh, page. What What the fuck? Okay, hold on. Literally hit the buttons. Control F. Yeah. And then you can search. So okay, okay, I found a little bit more. It's I mean essentially it it's a hard it's an anything goes hardcore match is what it is. Okay. Bunkhouse match, bunkhouse brawl. Yeah, it's it's a it's a hardcore match. They could have just a, said it's a murder match. <laughs> it might be. Well I no, hope. that's what that's what Lil the J was asking. He's like, is there a murder match? Uh like Probably. to the death. I mean, I'm sure that's been a stipulation <laughs> at some fucking death? wrestling match. Um, Probably like Impact, where they just keep killing people. That's true. That's true. God damn, we're like 50 minutes in, and we're not even halfway through the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Imagine if there was three of us. We'd we this this show, man. We'd still be on. Goddamn, Kenny versus. Uh, yes, we would. <laughs> oh god. Uh, but next was um, AEW Women's Championship match. Uh, champion Hikaru Shida taking on Nyla Rose. Listen. I don't know what they're going to do with Shida at this point. Like, what is there to do? She's beat everybody. It felt... Okay, so... We don't really need to go play-by-play play except for, like, the back half of the match. Where Shida hit a Michinoku driver. I think she hit her finisher. But either way, mm -hmm. she refused to pin Nyla Rose. She did the one to pick Nyla Rose up. Like a heelish move. Although Shida looks the furthest thing from a heel. Um, after which, uh, Vicky Guerrero gets involved a little bit. And it really looks like this is setting up for Nyla Rose to win. But Shida completely completely dominates nyla rose in the in the back half of this match just yeah. hitting move after move finisher after finisher and then pins nyla rose ultimately uh vicky guerrero berates nyla similar to how we saw natalia break up with lana um although we get this spot where vicky is slapping the piss out of nyla rose in the face you're expecting Nyla to deliver like a bubble bomb through a fucking table. You know what Something. I mean? Yeah. Didn't happen. Nyla Rose looked shook, looked genuinely hurt, cry face. I threw out in the chat immediately. It was like, yo, are they trying to turn Nyla like face? 
they they invested more in Nyla's storytelling uh, with this match than they did their own champion Sheeta. It was weird. It doesn't make sense. Like, first of all, this match had no build going into it, which pissed me off thoroughly. Yeah, except outside their original match. Like, that's kind of all they banked on was like, oh, remember how good their original match was? Their original match was a freaking, like, no DQ match. That's why it was so good. And it was badass. Okay, it was. And it was really it was a great badass. match. Yeah. But, like, this, this was, okay, my least favorite match of the night. This and the Elite Deletion are, like, bottom two. Nah. Elite Deletion beat nah. this one, obviously. You're crazy. Uh, well, call me crazy, then, because I... I... <laughs> call me crazy again. <laughs> I did... I don't know. It's just something about this match. It, it didn't hit. Like, she is great, but... Like you said, like, they invested so much on Nyla. And, like, after the match... And Vicky literally calling her pathetic, slapping her girl's face, and walking away. Like, what are you doing? Like, their division makes me so mad. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. Like I said, it was it was the least invested match. Um, very little storytelling, not much to play on. I mean, all we can do really is is uh, speculate, you know, where they're going. But there's really not much to do here. I think. Um, I don't know. Let's let's play a little, just a little bit of guessing, James. Uh, Sheeta Sheeta retains, so she's heel now. Who's a baby face? Nobody. So her and Britt Swole Baker. is. Nah, she'll be but... Swole. No, 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 not Swole because Swole's a face. Britt Baker. Britt Baker takes the title. Excuse me, off of Sheeta, and then Nyla goes on to do some whole. Uh, body shaming angle with some other heel female wrestlers where they just body shame her. So Nyla becomes empowered and becomes Nia Jax. Uh, and then from there, uh, Thunder Rosa just becomes the face of the women's division and eventually faces off in a champion versus champion match against Britt Baker. That's where this all goes. <laughs> I tried so hard to take a lot of that seriously. You were you, <laughs> fucking Christ. <laughs> you were like, oh, like the body shaving angle. I was like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's WWE's thing. That ain't AEW's thing. I hope. We'll see. <laughs> don't don't put that don't put that in the air. How dare you? We'll see. Oh my god. Oh, where are we at? 48 minutes? I'm clipping that shit. 48. Okay. <laughs> Nia Jax fucking actually wrestle. Oh, fuck. Oof. Well. Let's, let's, let's get off this match. There's really nothing. There's nothing we have to talk about here, so. I, I like that you put the 48 in the family chat. <laughs> this is the first place I could document it. <sighs> All right. Let's move on to the match of the night. <laughs> because... It legitimately was the match of the night. Uh, the tag team title match, FDR, the champions, taking on the Young Bucks. Tully Blanchard has been banned from ringside because of all of the uh, crazy shenanigans he has been pulling in the past. Like, how long have they been champs? Like, a month? Yeah. Yeah. He legitimately tried to break Matt Jackson's ankle. Obviously, they don't want this motherfucker ringside. No, you really wouldn't. No, you... Yeah. And no, no. And, like, listen. The fact that Matt is legitimately injured and has been injured since July, I was like, there's no way the Bucks are going to win this. As much as my heart wanted the Bucks to win, I had I had FTR retaining for the sole fact that Matt Jackson was is legitimately hurt. And they definitely played it up very well like um i'm trying to even focus no it's cool it's... like let's let's be honest about this match though this match was 100 percent talent in nostalgia driven i think mean of, yeah think about how 
many callback spots we got. We got the Young Bucks doing American Alpha callbacks. We got between, yeah, no, between, I bet you missed that one. Nick Jackson doing the whole come here when Matt came out of nowhere and fucking speared him. That's American how Alpha. The f- how the fuck did I not get that one? Yeah, dude. And then you had the DIY callback by the fuck. That dude. one was. Dude, and the fact that they name that dropped one. DYI, I thought that was fantastic, too. By DIY. Way. <laughs> DYI. DYI. Do you, did I say you said you said DIY it's DIY oh wow Jesus my bad all right uh the um, callback to the Steiners uh Har Foundation those were by FTR uh the, the Hardys the, and the Dudleys the Dudleys into the Hardys the, like the they did a 3D and I was like why is no one saying it's a 3D and then they did it fucking again and it was like, oh yes, and then they called it, yeah, the the Dudleys and the Hardys. It was, it was so well done. I mean, for one, look, we have to condense what felt like what was it, like forty minutes? It was a half hour to forty minute match. It was a long ass match. Yeah, it was incredible. There was a ton of spots. Uh, I mean, it wasn't just spots; it was storytelling, everything. Um, mm-hmm. No, it was it was fantastic. There was I would love for somebody, and I'm sure it'll be done by tomorrow, for somebody to make a clipped video for every tag team callback spot that they did uh, yeah. in that match because it really was like an homage to all of the greatest tag teams that have fucking ever done it. You know, it was yeah. it was amazing. Uh, what was what was really cool was kind of like what you were saying was they did play up. Uh, matt jackson's injury a lot of the time taking him out the match at one point he loses his fucking boot um and it was crazy it came down to him and dax harwood and dax doing a springboard 450 splash i think it was cash oh cash excuse me because dax because dax earlier in the match like smacked the shit out the ring post and like Fucked up his hand. Yeah, no, you were, it was Cash. It was Cash. What's more surprising, Cash doing a springboard 450 or the Young Bucks actually winning a match off of a super kick? So how dare you? <laughs> the super oh, kick man. is like no more effective than a chop. You know, like <laughs> I, I mean, that's true. Dude, when Cash hit that springboard for 50, I was like, oh, God, they're going to lose. If he hit it, I was like, they lost to da- to dudes who were like, no flips, just fists. Yeah. Ugh. Cash Wheeler did a fucking 450. I can't wait for the story angle on Dynamite <laughs> of Dax chewing that fucking dude out. Dude, Tully's... Probably in the back, just smacking the <laughs> shit out of him. No flips. <laughs> you, <laughs> you did one and a half. <laughs> no flips. Oh, my uh, God, what a fucking match it was, though. Jesus it, Christ, this match. If you if you have endurance, if you can sit like sit down for longer than a half hour and watch a fucking match, watch this one. This shit was fantastic. The moment it was done, I called it match of the year. Like is I'm watching it through rose fucking tinted glasses, of course. But oh man, nothing really comes to mind right now that just was so entertaining. Literally, as soon as Matt hit the super kick and pinned him, I dropped everything around me and started crying. (laughs) It's more so the fact that, like, I know he's legitimately injured and he really has been for months. And he still went out there and put on one hell of a fucking performance. Yeah. Ugh. What do they do, though, now? It's not like you go on a long title defense. Do they I know. relinquish the belts on Dynamite? No. Do I, they shoehorn a quick loss? If anything, it's probably going to be that. I don't know. 
that's why I didn't want them to win because I was like, well, fuck, they're gonna have to relinquish them soon anyways because Matt probably needs surgery. <laughs> Damn it! Tell but they won, the so good they can from fucking Stop impact. It. <laughs> Dude, if it ends up being the Good Brothers, all hell's breaking loose. <laughs> Fucking civil oh. war, son of a bitch. They've already had too many civil wars. That's true, that's true. They can't take another one. <sighs> what match followed oh, this match. one again? Was the it fucking, Y2J? Oh, oh. No, it was Elite Deletion. It was. That's right. Which is why I wasn't as focused on this match, because I was still trying to breathe and compose myself after the Young Bucks match. <laughs> The elite deletion was cool. It was it was it, fun. As far as the deletion saga, I put it second best. You had the ultimate deletion, which was the first. No, the the final deletion, excuse me, was the first. The ultimate was WWE's version, mm -hmm. and then you have this one. I think this one ranks second. I think WWE's was the worst. Um Mm -hmm. uh they completely murdered sammy Guevara. like for one i thought they murdered him right out the gate because so if we're going to talk through this in segments uh matt hardy's seen kind of like prepping the battlefield like he always does in this shit sammy pulls up in the quietest goddamn golf cart <laughs> like <Honestly. that. laughs> it's like the quietest goddamn thing um and i i popped because Sammy runs over a toy monster truck and talk about some foreshadowing. <laughs> yeah. Fucking. Immediately following that, uh, Matt Hardy appears in the darkness in a legitimate monster truck, runs it over, says, uh, that's what I call a squash. What, it's not a squash match, a squash. Something. Something referring to squash match. People popped yeah. because he does the whole BTE like. Uh, terms of the insider shit <laughs> which that would have been hilarious if he just said like wait <laughs> oh my god i would have died that's oh um, they definitely should uh oh, damn it they should have there was some simple brawling like outdoor brawling led to a ring uh in the ring santana and ortiz finally come in private party emerge we get some fireworks action uh it's <laughs> Bills out next to the lake of reincarnation. Matt's about to toss Sammy into it, which, by the way, I was heavily intrigued by. I was like, oh, shit. If Sammy gets dunked, he comes back as something else, right? We didn't get that. They swerve us. There's a masked man holding Hurricane fucking Helms hostage. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, fucking ends up being Gangrel who's teaming up with Santana and Ortiz. I hope this shit spills over to Dynamite. I hope they can wrap it up in a nice little bow. Uh, uh, Matt Hardy releases Hurricane. They uh, There's some more brawling. Sammy Guevara throws Hurricane into the re uh, Lake of Reincarnation. Hurricane comes back as his journalist persona, the playoff of Superman and the fucking journalist. Um, and then it gets tossed again and he comes back as Hurricane. Uh, eventually it. a lot of brawling ensues and then they find they find themselves in what like the dome of deletion dome of deletion thank you uh You're in okay. which case matt hardy proceeds to violently murder sammy guevara holy shit so they did the play off of the head injury and also mm -hmm. the uh the the chair spot so yeah. initially uh, in here, you see all the throwback items from all the deletion stuff. Uh, you see the piano. You see, oh god, do you remember what they called the lawnmower? I'm, that was the funniest fucking thing. Was uh, <sighs> fuck. I'm gonna see if I can't wasn't look. it just wasn't it just like mower of lawns or something? Maybe it was the mowers of lawn. Um, I'll look it up. Okay, yeah, you look it up while I go over this. I'll look it up. You talk. Okay, cool. We'll switch. Um, and then uh. So it spills. Sammy gets the upper hand. There's a ring in there. Sammy gets Matt Hardy on a table, climbs up this sketchy ladder to the roof. What I thought was going to be the finish, he delivers a swanton bomb on Matt Hardy through the table. And I thought this was a passing of the torch. They got dramatic music playing and shit. 
<laughs> they really did. Yeah, I was like, oh, this is fucking dope, man. Um, Matt kicks out, but then we get the two big spots. We get uh, Matt Hardy uh, spears Sammy Guevara through the ropes, which, by the way, Sammy has dismantled. Uh, through some tables, this was obviously a callback to the spot where Matt Hardy concussed himself. Sammy's bleeding all over the concrete. And then um, Matt Hardy picks up a chair, chucks it in Sammy's face. Another callback to a spot between Sammy and Matt Hardy. And then he delivers the only missing tag team spot we missed from the Young Bucks match. A fucking concerto, which is a callback to Edge and Christian on the pavement. And at this point... Uh, uh, Sammy's dead. Uh, just <laughs> fucking dead on pay per view. Sorry, mom and dad who are watching this. Your son is fucking dead. Okay. Uh, three yeah. serious head wounds all following each other. Uh, I don't know how Matt Hardy's the baby face. The music was even dramatic and evil. Uh, so dramatic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Matt opens the door. Now, so this is what got me. I'm feeling at this point there's been a turn here. Matt Hardy has turned to the dark side. He's going to open up the doors. He's like, come on in, you know. And I'm expecting all of his friends to be fucking dead, right? <laughs> like, it's, he says. It's just, you know, the twist. I'm looking for twists. Murder. It's, instead, Private Party comes in and like a baby face, like a complete clean cut baby face, Matt Hardy orders them to throw Sammy's dead body into a trash can and load it onto a truck where senior benjamin can dispose it um matt hardy's an evil motherfucker like that dude's a psychopath after all matt this. matt hardy legitimately murdered a boy <laughs> and had his friends put the carcass of the boy in a trash can this is some breaking bad bullshit okay <laughs> like what even is wrestling <laughs> telling you man <laughs> also it is mower of lawns mower of lawns thank you it's, that was the most important part we pair of wheels for. mower of lawns it all makes sense that that match just <laughs> i don't telling even you. know <laughs> the, i ex i hope there's some follow-through with this on dynamite i hope we see something from gangrel I hope we see something from Hurricane Helms, even if it's a quick write-off, like a quick three-on-three -three tag team send-off. You know what I mean? Because let's face it, Gangrel looks pretty cool. Hurricane always looks awesome, no matter what I you do. I love Hurricane. Hurricane. Yeah. Um, God, <laughs> I'd like to see it. You know, honestly, you know what I'd like to see is like, I, I know it's impossible, but like, if we could just get the Broods music again. One more time. One more time. One more time. Get the Broods fucking music. WWE owns a license to that. And how have they sat on that shit for like fucking 30 years and only used it once for a Halloween episode with the New Day? Oh that, my it, god, I forgot about that. Yeah, man. The New Day fucking Jesus. did that shit. It was awesome. I'm over here breaking Katie. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> uh, am I Matt Hardy? Am I broken? <laughs> anyway, I think I am. We got the MJF uh, Y2J shit after this, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're not even talking about the Lance Archer, Jake the Snake bullshit because Jake the Snake legitimately creeps me the fuck out. We're not even talking about it. I missed that promo. I think I was putting my kids to bed. You, you missed nothing. Okay. It's literally... I just you will fall he's gonna beat up everybody Ooh, yeah. scary the, you, <laughs> i give two shits about either you lost to cody rhodes who lost to a child okay lance let's chill out a child <laughs> uh but uh mjf versus chris jericho if Ma uh i wrote if max wins <laughs> i'm not calling him MJF anymore. i'm calling him max if but max yeah. wins he joins the inner circle. Uh, Max has his callback to Jericho's light up jacket with his light up robe. Um, and like almost immediately, Jericho goes for a Judas effect and hits the post. That was awesome. Like, holy shit. 
What is with people just missing their moves tonight and just hitting the post? How many people do you think got booked in the match? Because if you think about it, if you only have a couple of producers, they might reuse the same shit, you know? Just a thought. Just a thought. Anyways. Just a thought. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Anyways. um, What are, like, the good takeaways from this? Uh, at one point, Jericho goes for a juice effect again later in the match, and friggin' Max has the salt of the earth, like, locked in tight, and that looks painful as all hell. That so, arm bar that he does? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> like, hurts. My arm, thinking about it. And then, after he gets out of that, Max motions for Wardlow to come to the ring, gives him the freaking diamond ring, um, and Wardlow's distracting Aubrey, and Jericho's like, this to Hager brings out Floyd and he starts spinning it. Max does the classic Eddie spot where he drops. I like Max's twist though. Before he, he drops, he just gives the double birds. Yes. Which, by the way, we saw middle fingers a lot tonight. Um, we also heard a lot of F's. Yeah, we did. <laughs> a lot of F's. <laughs> but yeah, I did love the double birds to falling down. It was a nice touch. On, um, because we've seen a couple Eddie spots. I mean, Ricochet did the the classic faint on the head on like the hand on the forehead. Like everyone's added their own touch, you know, yeah. to the Eddie spot, uh, which I love. And MJF was true to himself, you know, mm -hmm. giving the middle fingers and then dropping. Um, ultimately, did not get the DQ win, but was able to roll up uh, Y2J, who. Was happy to lose to him. Gave him a hug afterwards and welcome to the inner circle. Y2J, you know you just signed your death warrant, right? Like and the you... fact that it was Max and Wardlow. Like, where was Wardlow's name anywhere in this? Yeah, it's almost like last second. They were like, man, fuck. Like, <laughs> like, because no, honestly, they were going to throw Wardlow to Dark Order. And I believe, honestly, that was the plan. And then they got cold feet. Right. They, they teased it. They teased him going to Dark Order, like, on a couple occasions. But I was like, nah, they'll never follow through with this. Um, and you were right. You pretty much just signed the death warrant for you and at least Sammy Guevara. At least. Think of, yeah, well, think about Sammy. Tonight, Sammy kind of turned face. You don't take a beating like that and still come out fully healed. Like, you garnish sympathy yeah. whenever you're murdered on fucking screen. Um <sighs> And then Y2J obviously signed his own death warrant. So, I mean, I see that. Like, him and Sammy Guevara are instantly two casualties. So, who does MJF win over in the inner circle? Let's 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 discuss that. Who does let's MJF discuss. fucking turn coat? You, Santana Ortiz. Boom. Right away, right? Well, only Santana. Ortiz fucking can't stand Max. You think that he could get Santana and Ortiz to break up? I mean... Santana was like, I guess, on the fence about Max joining before um, Ortiz and Sammy had that tag match on Wednesday with MJF and Wardlow. Because Sammy and Ortiz were like, fuck no, we don't want MJF in the inner circle. Right. Santana was on the fence, but Jericho and Hager, I guess, were like 100% for it. <sighs> uh. Max is just gonna break it apart and just be like, haha, I just didn't need anybody. The whole faction. He's going to. He's gonna try and sneak his way to the top, take out Jericho, become the leader of the inner circle, and then proceed to dismember it from the inside. How many people have we seen do this? We saw The Rock do that with Nation of Domination. Rock did that. Triple H got Shawn Michaels out. Of DX, True. I um, would think. I'm trying to think recently. Yeah, I would think that. I would think okay. Jericho, Sammy out. Possibly Hager. 
I could see Jericho, Sammy, and Hager all getting taken out, and then it's MJF, Santana, Ortiz, and the fucking Wardlow, and then and then eventually Santana Ortiz do their own thing, you know. Hmm. I could see that. I don't know. I really just love that Hager and Wardlow keep just staring daggers at each other. <laughs> They have been for weeks. Like Every f- time they're in near each other, just staring each other dead in the eye. Yeah. I don't know. Either way, although Jericho, you just you just fucking Trojan horsed your goddamn faction right there. I mean, Max literally winked into the camera as he was leaving. Did you see that? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that Trojan He's horse a is fucking done. Snake. <laughs> done so, my man. God damn it. And then uh, following this, we got the main event, though, right? Yes. The I Quit match for the AEW world title. John Moxley taking on Eddie Kingston. <laughs> this match was so brutal. How, how? Okay. The promo package had me fucking in my feels. Eddie Kingston sitting on that goddamn railroad talking about mm-hmm. his mom and everything he'd been through, all the callback photos from the indies of him in, in uh, Moxley. Mox. Jesus Christ. Like, you could have had the match take place in the background and just pan to the winner. That promo package was so good. But, uh... The promos. The promos for everything were so good. Yeah. Um... No, the match the match was pretty brutal. I I don't think it it definitely it was not as brutal as the lights out match with Moxley and Omega. True. That, that shit set a bar really fucking high. Mm-hmm. Uh, um I don't know, like I said, this was one of my weaker matches. There was just a there was a lot of um barbed wire. Mhm. Like on the bat around Kingston's fist. Uh, towards uh, to end the match around Mox's arm, thumbtacks. Which as soon as you see the black bag, you know damn well it's thumbtacks. Even even commentary wasn't playing stupid. They were they like, were just like, oh, I wonder oh. what's in that bag. <laughs> Literally, what I said out loud to myself I'm like, hmm, I wonder what that is. <laughs> Fucking thumbtacks. You can you could watch wrestling for like a year and know. Anytime you see a black bag, you know it's fucking dumb. I bags. wish that shit had got mixed up with Brandon Cutler's bag and they just poured out fucking dice. The fucking dice. <laughs> oh, God. Which, by <laughs> the way, thinking back, the dice almost seem more painful than fucking thumbtacks. I'm not going to lie. Oh, yeah, because they're like the D&D dice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're all... Oh, yeah. Shit, no, I, I think get, those like, are worse. Fucking little Legos and shit. Oh. Ow. <laughs> I can feel it in my back. (laughs) Uh, I mean, there is, there's so much violence, like a lot of dick kicks, which you probably loved. Oh yes. Fucking the stomping of the balls. And then just like the grinding of them. Like a fucking sick dude, like a mortar and pestle. And he was trying to make a goddamn potion out of Moxley's testicles. It was fantastic. Okay, uh, it was it was a wonderful thing, man. It was a wonderful sight, and he was just gearing him up to try and get him to say "I quit." Um, you know, because by the way, it's like not only do you have this excruciating pain in front of you, but you and your hot wife, who's making cookbooks, are no longer going to be able to make children. So you might want to quit. Uh, I, I that's what I thought. I was like, if Mox can't have kids because of this, I will be pissed. <laughs> It was, I mean, but I mean, honestly, let's be honest. It was a by the books kind of like hardcore match. There was nothing overly surprising. They were working limbs, a lot of submissions. What, what you got? Um, after Mox goes, uh, into the thumbtacks and Kingston grabs the fucking rubbing alcohol. Okay. Okay. So that's, that was the cool spot. Um, I love that he didn't uh, use it right away. He put it down so the camera could pan to it like six <laughs> times before. Because he's a sicko. He was <laughs> laughing like the whole time. To- Eddie Kingston might be a psychopath. I'm just saying. Oh, man. Yeah, he broke out fucking. <laughs> he broke out rubbing alcohol. 
Oh yeah. man. Uh, God it was, awful. It was fantastic. Poured that shit all over Mox. Um, it did come down to though a strand of barbed wire that Kingston had removed from Mox's baseball bat. Uh, after you know using it to work on Mox, ultimately Moxley got the upper hand. Uh, Kingston found himself on his knees with his back to Moxley, uh, gave him the bird because he knew he had nothing left in the tank, and Moxley put him in the bulldog choke with the wire. Uh, Kingston apparently mouthed I quit to the ref. I don't think the mic picked it up, at least not on my I end. could hear it. Okay. He, he like barely choked it out. Um, it was, like I said, kind of a flat ending. These I quit matches... When you have two people that you really, that fans are behind. So it's one thing if you have a clear-cut heel that you want to see get theirs. Go mm -hmm. back and watch JBL and John Cena in their I Quit match. You wanted to see JBL say I Quit. Mm -hmm. This match, you didn't want to see either of the men quit <laughs> due to actual punishment. You wanted to see something similar to what we had between Roman Reigns and Jay Uso. Them mm -hmm. looking out for the well-beings of someone else. Something beyond themselves. Because Kingston yeah. saying I quit from a bulldog choke with fucking barbed wire. Like, it doesn't make sense. The man let himself pass out. Like, fucking pass out last time. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't make sense for all of a sudden he wants to quit because he has a couple fucking scratches in his jaw this time. It it didn't make sense to me. Like the finish fell so flat. I it granted I get like I wanted Kingston to win. It doesn't piss me off so much that he lost, but there should mm -hmm. have been some added stipulation to it, you know? It should have been like Moxley is like, look, I got the IRS on the phone. I'm about to have them audit your mother. You know, if you don't quit right now, at that point, Kingston has a right to say I quit. Like, don't don't audit my mom, Moxley, you know, <laughs> and fucking I get it. Like, but what we got just didn't make sense to me, man. God damn it. I'm going to audit your mom. <laughs> what the fuck? I can't. What? I can't. <laughs> Where did you? <laughs> Dude, we Out of know, all, we know, we know he was a couple months ago selling his boots and about to sell his crib to make rent. Okay, he doesn't need the IRS in his family business right now. I don't know, like you know, like the AEW checks are good, but it might he might need a couple more before you know he's out of that situation. Until then, he doesn't need any audits. I legitimately can't stand you. <laughs> I'm sorry, like this just <laughs> That's the first thing you think of. Ah, uh, Kingston, I got your mom on the phone. I got the IRS ready. You want her to get audited? Don't audit my Say mom, Mox. <laughs> <laughs> just don't, please don't don't audit my mom, please. <laughs> I mean, so Mox wins with the bulldog choke with barbed wire you fucking clipped it i knew it <laughs> um and then kenny comes out and i really expected some type of like cool ass confrontation no nothing no and them just saying any. this would, and a lot of pointing and that, that would have been cool if kenny had turned heel at that point jump moxley in a yeah. celebration what That's are you waiting for I, like what the fuck you waiting for that's Mox literally debuted behind Kenny. That would have been perfect for Kenny to just sneak up behind Mox. Very much like they did at uh, Double or Nothing. But no, they they just had Kenny casually walk out, s still shirtless in basketball shorts, and just a lot of pointing. I hey, can't man, read I'm lips. Here. You, me, yeah. Four and months then, from now. I can't. That they had so stupid. much potential. It was stupid. It was a really fucking stupid send off. I mean, great, great show overall, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just weak ass finish. They needed more IRS, more murder, more heel turns. I do commend I them know. for bringing out Gangrel and Hurricane Helms, though. There was a lot of murder, though. 
There was really only Sammy, though. Sammy got murdered. But that was a lot of murder <laughs> to really one child. It was a slow murder. It was a very slow murder. That was a, that was a whole two-part uh, episode of, like, Criminal Minds type shit. <laughs> That's how long Sammy's murder dragged on. I really wish, like, the Doma deletion had just looked like fucking um, something from Dexter. Like, they had panned Jesus. over, and there's just, like, a bunch of plastic <laughs> and fucking surgical tools. Ah, oh, That would have been my shit so right there. That would have been my shit. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. Oh, God. But, yeah, that's full gear. This has been the <laughs> longest freaking recap we've ever done. It's been, a, it's been a long one. It's been a long day. It's been a long pay-per-view. A long recap. <sighs> There's hey, not really much else to do. <laughs> thank you guys for being in the live chat. Dommy, uh, Savannah, Jay in here. Jay. Yeah, Matt Ritter was in here. He's back in the fucking live or in our group chat again. I'm very um, confused. Yeah. No, man. Thank you guys so much. Uh, <sighs> if you like the show on YouTube, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can see anytime you know we put up a new video. Uh, all that fun stuff. And uh, like always, like always, till next time, y'all have a good one. Okay, you gotta say bye. You gotta say bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>